Many people in the Institute are already using XFELs, but the big problem we have is we don't have a lot of access because beam time is very limited and the X-rays we're getting are not quite good enough and uh, in some senses many orders of magnitude far from good enough to do the sort of research we want. Beam time is a very hard to come by commodity. It's also very risky right now to do beam time so we tend to, uh, or a lot of times groups that have some uh, ability already demonstrated at FELs find more time at FELs. We need to get away from this kind of uh, way of working. So I'm already you know quite a heavy user um, of x-ray free electron lasers and at the moment I'm sort of traveling all over the world to make use of the capabilities that other countries offer me. Laser science in the UK is really powerful and it's an, a great propellant of the economy by the way. Photonics, which lasers are part of, generates more for the GDP of the UK than pharmaceuticals. So we've got an amazing industrial appetite to build on this and a tremendously vibrant research activity. We pioneered a lot of this. Now we, we've got a great deal of experience with X-ray lasers using LCLS in Stanford and XFEL in, in Hamburg. But what about doing something in the UK where the enthusiasm for that next generation of people can really drive great science and great applications? Any big science facility like this is going to um, boost the local economy of wherever it's built and boost the skills base in, in the country generally uh, and also provide great opportunities for science, for engineering, for technological developments and very importantly for the UK based companies who are going to want to come along and use it in their missions. Bringing that community in the UK together through a facility actually generates new ideas as they spark things between each other. Biologists, physicists, electrical engineers, all working on this in harmony and just by being together will bring new ideas. Now we don't really know what materials are going to be used in technology in 20 years. Having the kind of microscopic probe in the UK will enable us to really keep on leading on that. Having a facility that has a very high repetition rate can mean that we can get very high signal to noise ratios um, and we can or we can start uh, getting higher signal to noise ratios and we can start to look at minor processes so instead of just looking at a very concentrated sample or a sample that absorbs very well we can start going towards very um, important samples and say well this molecule is important in atmospheric chemistry but it doesn't have that much absorption so it's a very small signal we can start to look at these small signals and understand what's going on. It's quite clear that many countries have strong interests in developing Developing these things. France has a, a development project, um, Shine is being built in, in China um, and that really is because of the sort of transformative um, opportunities they offer um, both in terms of science and in terms of, of technology. If the technology is available in the UK people will be able to make use of it in a much more convenient way which will lead probably to more work being done, probably more speculative work which, personal belief, leads to interesting discovery. I think we are in danger of falling far behind some of our critical high-tech competitors. USA has one of these machines and is thinking about upgrading towards a machine a bit like UK XFEL. Um, China is building a machine and could upgrade it towards that same point. Um, European XFEL, which we're members of, and so that's part of what we already do, um, uh, is also providing, particularly for, for Germany and, and, and other European countries, uh, very much critical mass resources, but any one nation in that collaboration only gets a, a relatively small fraction of beam time. So if we're just forced to fall back on what we can scrape together from other sources, there will be a gradual falling away. And over years, that will, could well leave the UK very far adrift in terms of our scientific and technological capabilities. If we don't have an SFL in the UK, what will happen is that the science will still continue, but it won't be embedded in the ecosystem of UK science. It won't be able to use those new insights that it, it generates into new material science, new engineering, 
Um, and, and that means that then we will not be reaping the benefits of those scientific insights. Having fewer FELs worldwide means that um, availability of beam time remains a struggling point. And like I said, we have many experiments that go undone. They're great experiments, great ideas that could happen, but just don't get to happen because we only have, you know, X number of uh, X hours of beam times in a year. I think the UK is well blessed with infrastructure in some areas and way behind the curve in others. I think this is an area, particularly when we look at all the applications. I mean, today we're talking about quantum computing, we're talking about sort of use of AI and a number of other things. Those are all areas that are critical to the UK. We need to enable our researchers to work productively in those fields. If we were to have an XFEL, and that community around it that starts to really work in an interdisciplinary way, there will be surprises. If I worked out what we would, we would discover in a decade, and I guess now, I bet you I'm wrong, but what will it do? It will transform our ability to understand catalysis. Why should we worry about that? Think about the energy usage in catalysis. If we could do that, it could really transform us and it would be a scientific breakthrough of extraordinary power. And that's what we really should be doing in the UK. So catalysis, materials analysis, but think about the biological side of it, of understanding how molecules, for example, manage to get through the kind of barriers in a cell. Well, that sounds like something you should do in situ. An expert will enable you to do that. So looking at drug discovery, looking at the way that drugs actually attack and, and, and demolish infectious diseases, materials, all sorts of things. This is why this is a great tool. And it's a, an enormous tool, but it's a tool which many really desire because they can see how it would transform their lives. I guess in my own field, in ultra-fast electron dynamics, I would really hope that we're going to be able to measure those dynamics, not just in isolated molecules or whatever, but in real systems, in operando, doing things like photo photovoltaics and, and the like, and, and actually fully understand all the mechanisms that are going on because we can look inside uh, both in, 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 in space and in time to the timescales where the critical events are going. Now, I won't be doing that in 30 years' time. I'm unlikely to be active in science in 30 years' time, but I'm very hope, much hoping that my current PhD students and, and undergraduates who are currently coming through will be able to be benefiting from that uh, opportunity. Thank you.